Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't have to, and today we are talking about Palantir Technologies, ticker symbol PLTR stock, to determine what these three analysts think of the stock and why Palantir has amazing stock price predictions that are way higher than what the stock is currently trading at, which makes it a fantastic buying opportunity according to these analysts. Then we're going to be doing a deep dive and assessing the long-term fundamentals and even the long-term stock price predictions of Palantir stock and why I think this is a fantastic long-term holding opportunity and how long I mean by a long holding opportunity. Because Palantir technology should not be treated as a one to two year hold if you believe in their underlying technology. So with that being said, remember to go and smash that like button right now for more Palantir stock videos. Subscribe if you are new, comment your thoughts down below and your price targets regarding the PLTR stock for this year, and now let's get right into the video. So Palantir Technologies is a big data and analytics company that's serves both commercial clients as well as government agencies. Currently, Palantir's PLTR stock trades for around $14.16, which is actually a recent boost because their earnings report is rapidly approaching, which is going to be on February 17th. The low-end analyst price target is $13 per share. The average price consensus among analysts is $20.17 per share for the next 12 months, and the high-end price prediction is $25.30. In total, 11 analysts that I studied cover this stock, and one of them says it's a strong buying opportunity, six say to hold Palantir for long term, two say that Palantir Technologies is going to underperform the overall market, and two analysts say to sell the stock. So overall, analysts are not inherently bullish about this particular company, but we're going to get into more why three various analysts and particular institutions are pretty bullish on this stock. The stock price has dropped more than 25% year to date because overall the technology sector has performed very poorly in 2022. Palantir, like I said earlier, will be reporting their fourth quarter and full year 2021 earnings and their revenues, including free cash flows, on February 17th. So if you are an investor of Palantir, we could see great volatility in the stock price, whether that be good or bad, on February 17th. The company's management did provide guidance for a 30% annual growth rate for the next five years, and this is very impressive news. This means that the company could be bringing in around $6 billion worth worth of revenue by 2026. The CEO, who is Alex Karp, also recently released an annual shareholder letter today, and the letter addressed several themes. This included the prevalence of Palantir software, the company's relationship and network within the US government, and the problems that Palantir is currently facing and potential solutions to these problems. With Palantir's earnings report coming up, Palantir investors are determining what they should do with their PLTR stock. Should they buy more? Should they sell more? Should they hold? So that's why these investors are looking to what Wall Street thinks of this particular company. Well, down below, I have three institutions and three analysts that are either very bullish on this company or are pretty down to earth. So let's start off with Credit Suisse, who has a price target for the PLTR stock in the next 12 months of $25. Credit Suisse, and specifically analyst Phil Winslow, is very impressed with Palantir's Foundry platform, and they think that it could create significant value for the overall company. But with that being said, the analyst says that he wants to see more evidence on Palantir's evolution and their go-to-market model to acquire more commercial clients. Likewise, Jeffrey's Financial Group has a price target of $21 for the PLTR stock over the next 12 months, which would give investors fantastic returns from the stock's current price, which currently trades for around $14 per share. This particular analyst, who is Brent Thill, believes that the next leg of growth from Palantir Technologies will come from their commercial business accelerating. And again, it's always fantastic news to finally see analysts backing up my original thesis and reason that I bought Palantir Technologies for from over three months ago. So finally, analysts are jumping on board for something that I already identified particularly in their commercial business. Lastly, we have a William Blair analyst who is pretty bearish about this overall company because his price target tends to range between $12 and $16. Because he's not impressed with any of Palantir's new contracts during the recent quarter, and he actually thinks that the government as well as their commercial growth is intended to slow down. So overall, these are actually pretty bullish price predictions for the company 
company because the current stock price trades below every single one of these except maybe the $12 price target. So if you have an average price of Palantir Technologies below $12, this could be a fantastic buying opportunity for long term. But when I say long term, what do I mean by that? Well, first, let's talk about the fundamentals of the company and why this is a long term company. And then we'll talk a little bit about what I mean by a long term investor. As a long term investor myself, along with the author of the Seeking Alpha article, which I implore you to read because this article is one of the most in depth articles about Palantir Technologies that I have read. And I would really encourage you to click the link in the description and go read this article for yourself. By you clicking on the link, it does absolutely nothing for me. But I think if you want to read this article instead of me summarizing it for you, it could be very valuable to you for understanding Palantir fundamentally. But with that being said, long-term investors should not be concerned with current market volatility, any macroeconomic factors that affect the short run, or even the rise in interest rates that the Federal Reserve is going to implement. A long-term investor does not care about the day-to-day -day stock price volatility, or even what the stock price is going to be at next year. Instead, long-term investors pay close attention to the company's fundamentals and their technicals at times to determine the risk-to-reward ratio of investing into a particular company. Company. So with this recent sell-off, the author of this article, as well as myself, have the opportunity to almost triple down on our initial investment while also getting in at an even better price point. So what do I mean by a long-term investment? Well, a long-term investment normally refers to an investment that is going to last over five years. So in this particular instance, the author of the article says he plans on holding Palantir at least four to six years, and that's his investment horizon, and I 100% agree with him. For Palantir technology, this is a long-term investment because the company is still scaling. We're not supposed to get any major returns from this stock until much in the future, such as around 2024 to 2025 is when it's really going to start growing. I also want to talk about Palantir's unique economic moat. And Palantir has four main core moats, and we're going to be going over them right now. And this is ranging from their proprietary algorithms, the government, high switching costs, and their network effect. So let's start off with their algorithmic moat. Palantir has been building its algorithms for almost 20 years, which is a very long time. And this has allowed Palantir throughout the years to continuously improve on their technology, which uses very advanced algorithms. So this just basically means that they have a great technological advantage in the overall market, and they have a fantastic algorithmic moat. I also want to go in and talk about their government moat, because they offer their software and their products to various government agencies, and it requires massive upfront costs and years of development to even network themselves in with these various agencies. This, for one, is a huge barrier to entry to any competition because Palantir is already very buddy-buddy with the government, so Palantir easily already has their foot in the door for many of these open contracts. Another thing that's fantastic about this moat is that the U.S. government has spent a sizable amount of money prior to hiring Palantir for their various due diligence. The Government moat takes years to build, and Palantir has become mission critical for various government agencies. It would be crippling for various agencies to actually switch from Palantir's technology, because Palantir's technology is one of the best on the market, and two, they have very sticky software and very sticky products, which we will talk more about in their next moat. The article says that a recent example that provides strength through both their algorithms and their government moat is because Palantir had a successful lawsuit with the U.S. Army, which prevented the Army from building its own solution and ended up awarding Palantir a 10-year contract that is worth around $876 million. That these moats actually help each other out, including the switching costs moat, which we will talk about right now. According to Palantir's S1 form, the company's top 20 customers have a contract life of an average of around 6.6 .6 years, which is phenomenal news. This means that these companies are using Palantir Palantir's contracts for over half a decade, specifically for their top 20 customers, and this allows Palantir time to integrate even further into the company. That means Palantir's technology becomes fundamental and foundational for this particular company, and the company can't operate properly without Palantir's software. This makes the company reliant on Palantir, and most of these companies actually end up extending their contracts. The best part about this is that the company is actually anticipating an additional 3.5 years to be extended 
extended on top of the 6.6 years. So we could see over a decade worth of contracts from each of these top 20 customers. So this is fantastic news. And this is why Palantir Technologies has built themselves fantastic backlog work. The article says that once Palantir has established itself within the organization, it becomes that organization's central nervous system, making it impractical to replace their technology for that particular company. So once Palantir is integrated into a company, that company is better off just continuously using Palantir instead of switching technologies. And that's what I mean by Palantir's technology is extremely sticky. Now what about their network effect moat? Well this is basically the nature of Palantir's platform, and to me this gives Palantir a huge competitive advantage again compared to other competitors. Palantir's networking effect allows most members of an organization, such as data scientists, developers, management, and others, to access very complicated data, but Palantir technology presents this data in very digestible bytes. The network effect gets even more intense when Palantir's engineers work directly with this organization. So not only are the engineers creating rapport and a relationship with these particular organizations, these engineers are training these organizations how to properly utilize Palantir's advanced technology. And this just grows the relationship between Palantir and these other companies. Palantir's business model basically has them acquire, expand, and scale. Palantir can actually lose money for their acquisition phase to actually just acquire a new customer. Palantir is so confident that a customer will like their technology, they actually sometimes give that customer a free trial of their technology. And after that free trial ends and the customer likes the technology, they end up charging it and slowly increasing and integrating further and further into that company, which is the expansion phase. And once Palantir is integrated into the company enough, where that company is paying over $100,000 for their software, this is where the scale phase is implemented. In the expand phase, they do make a lot of revenues, however, Ever, $100,000 for a company that's worth over a billion dollars is not technically a lot of money. And their scale phase is where they make the most money because that is where these contracts can actually start ramping up for the overall revenues that Palantir is receiving. The reason why organizations love Palantir's technology so much is basically because it allows these organizations and even government agencies to make very informed decisions. And these decisions are based off of analytics and data. And organizations like Palantir Technology because Palantir's technology offers organizations the effect of a what-if analysis. So instead of the supply chain example that this author generated, I would rather use a sales model. For instance, let's say we have a widget that we are currently selling for $10. Now, we could run two what-if scenarios. So instead of it being $10, what if I price it at $15? So even though sales may cut back because it's more expensive, will I make more revenues? So does the increase in price and the margin increase at a higher rate than any of the actual quantity that I'm losing from sales? And how will this affect my overall inventory? Or we could run another what if analysis to say what if we lowered the price to $5? Even though we would have to sell two times more inventory just to make what we were making, maybe the cheap price will allow us to sell even more, thus making and generating us more revenue. So these what if scenarios are extremely important for a variety of different companies. Also, the 2026 price targets for Palantir Technologies range anywhere from $30 all the way up to $70 per share. But I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Remember to go and smash that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment your thoughts down below, and I will see you in the next YT video.